Good morning and welcome to Palm Sunday at Ascension and Holy Trinity. I would invite you, as if you are listening, to pause this recording and to go outside and gather a piece or a sprig of a new bush or hyacinth or something to hold as we bless our palms today. And then to keep that until we are once again gathered together when you can bring that with you and we can share them together. So let us begin. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from Matthew. When Jesus and his disciples had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophets, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our King and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ. Amen. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us an example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is a portion of Psalm 31. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eyes consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies and even to my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. I am forgotten like a dead man, out of mind. I am as useless as a broken pot, for I have heard the whispering of the crowd, fear is all around. They put their heads together against me, they plot to take my life, but as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant and in your loving kindness, save me. same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he is in the form of a God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him 
and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Passion, our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I betray Jesus to you? The priest paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that moment Judas began to look for an opportunity to betray Jesus. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? Jesus said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, Jesus took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And the disciples became greatly distressed and began to say to him, one after the other, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. And Jesus replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread and, after blessing it, broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup and, after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung to him, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to his disciples, You will all become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved even unto death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, Jesus threw himself on the ground and prayed, My Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, Jesus went away for the second time and prayed, My Father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, Jesus came and found the disciples sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, 
and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived with him with a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given the crowd a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once Judas came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. And Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then the crowd came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my Father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place, so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted Jesus and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest. And going inside, Peter sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last two came forward and said, this fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said to Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to Jesus, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. And Jesus said to him, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? The scribes and elders answered, he deserves death. Then they spat in Jesus' face and struck him, and some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Messiah. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was standing outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus, the Galilean. But Peter denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you're talking about. When Peter went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, Peter denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you also are one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then Peter began to curse and swore an oath, I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus said, Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to, the, to Pilate, the governor. 
When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. Judas said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But the chief priests and elders said, What is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the 30 pieces of silver in the temple, Judas departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priest, taking the silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. And they took the 30 pieces of silver, the price of one on whom a price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price, and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when Jesus was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But Jesus gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Bar Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to the crowd, Whom do you want me to release for you, Jesus Barabbas, or Jesus, who is called the Messiah? For Pilate realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests and the elders had handed Jesus over. When Pilate was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with this innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. And the governor said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And the crowd said, Barabbas. And Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified. Then Pilate asked, Why? What evil has he done? But the crowd shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people answered as a whole, His blood be on us and on, on our children. So Pilate released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed them over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped Jesus and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on Jesus and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put it on his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, the soldiers came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry Jesus' cross. And when the soldiers came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over Jesus' head, 
they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with Jesus, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads, saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from that cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking Jesus, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if God wants to. For this man said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with Jesus also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders heard it, and they said, This man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But others said, Wait, let us see if Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Then the earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him were keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, truly, this man was God's son. Many women were also there, looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them were Mary and Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. Joseph went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. Jesus, Joseph then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were sitting there opposite the tomb. The next day, that is after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and, the and said, Sir, we remember what that imposter said while he was still alive. He said, After three days I will rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure and the thir until the third day. Otherwise, Jesus' disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead and that the last deception would be worse than the first. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. This one, Jesus, this one we heard cheered with shouts of adulation as a messianic savior as he entered Jerusalem. We now hear, 
betrayed by one of his circle of 12 disciples, and again betrayed by one of those closest student who first claims loyalty even unto death, betrayed by all who could not watch and pray in the Garden of Gethsemane. This one, Jesus, enduring arrest and humiliation, who after one of his, who afterwards, one of his students takes a sword and cuts off the ear of a slave of one of the religious leaders arresting Jesus, takes the time, a singular moment, and commands his students to sheath the sword. We hear this Jesus take the time in this moment to teach his students, to remind them do you not think I can appeal and call out to God, my Father? Do you not think God would send legions of angels to save and protect me? In this singular moment, Jesus takes the time to remind the, his students who he is, who they are, why he has come to remind them God so loved the world that he gave his only son. In this moment, this Jesus we see and hear takes the time to remind his students and all who overhear that he did not require, regard equality with God as something to be exploited, <clears throat> that he has come among us as one of us. We see and hear this Jesus as he stands before the religious and civil leaders remain essentially silent. This one who in the days between Palm Sunday and this trial was in the temple court teaching, healing, and exhorting any and all who would listen and was anything but silent. As he called out for them to remember that right relationship with God is inextricably tied to our willingness to love, to our practice of love, that our right relationship with God is woven into our loving each other and giving to the least as our giving to God. And now we hear the silence of his presence. We hear the tangible silence of his choice to love not regarding equality with God as something to grasp, not exploiting his design, divine power to save himself, but choosing to remain firmly in his humanity. We hear and see this Jesus go to the cross, and we hear and overhear the sounds and cries of those around him as this one, this Jesus, cries out, alone and forsaken, my God, my God, and dies, fully, painfully human, and humbled even unto death. And as creation groans and cries out with walls tearing and rocks splitting, new awareness dawns on many of those who stood and saw and heard this one, this Jesus. And even his last cry and last breath at his most isolated and isolating moment on the cross is this one, this Jesus, given for love. This one alone, God with us. Not grasping power, but humbly dying for the sake of love not exploiting his divinity, but choosing to remain firmly in his humanity. Imagine, imagine that this is the come follow me. This is our call as Christians. Imagine that this is our call to live without grasping for one's own sake, but living in quiet solidarity with those who suffer every day. 
a call to live in quiet solidarity with those who have no voice, who have given up crying out to the Lord, who live forsaken and alone. Imagine this is our call, to lend our voices and our lives to the way of love that Jesus taught and lived and in which he dies. Imagine remembering and holding close in heart and practice that the crucifixion is not simply an event to be mourned or an entree to the resurrection, but a reminder of the malevolence that ensues when faithful people forget to remember that we stand with this one, this Jesus, who has come in the name of the Lord. Imagine seeing, hearing, and overhearing this one, this Jesus, our Savior and Lord, calling out to us, remember what it is to love. Come, follow me in the way of truth that is life. Amen. Claim together our historic Christian faith in the form of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us.
us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people can be found on page 385 and on form 2. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our bishops, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have the grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Gracious Lord, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will, and those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask. Grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And on this most holy day, I invite you to confess your sins against God and your neighbors. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you.